All right, students, so this is going to be a video showing you how to go about sampling within uh, SPSS itself. So we talked in this chapter about how to sample in the population that we're concerned about, but now we're actually going to talk about how to use SPSS to actually sample itself. And you might be wondering to yourself, well, since this is a sample that we pulled, right, so the General Social Survey, the data that we have here, is a sample. Why would we want to sample the sample? And the reason why you may want to do this is if you have a really, really large data set and if you're doing preliminary analysis, you might want to just look at a few cases before you actually go about running the data for the entire data set, okay, or running the analysis for the entire data set. So that's one of the uses of uh, sampling within uh, SPSS itself. And another use is just to kind of, for illustrative purposes, to show you all, you know, how the standard error of the mean and the variation or the variance of the sampling distribution is influenced by sample size. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So how would you go about sampling within SPSS itself? So what you're going to do is you're going to come up here and then you're going to click on data. Okay, so we learned about how to use date. We learned about this data tab before when we split the file. Um, here, what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select cases. So we're gonna select certain cases, and there's a lot of functions here with this select cases. But we're just gonna learn about how to sample. So we're gonna learn about how to pull a random sample. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click random sample, and then we are going to sample, okay? So here we're going to take an approximate percentage of cases. So instead of getting, so, the whole 1500 respondents, you might want to take like, let's just say 10% of uh, the cases in the general social survey. So let's just go ahead and like click here and put 10%. And then, and, and the reason why it says approximate and here it says exact is because here you can tell to take an exact number of cases. Here, the approximate cases, since there's about 1500 um, respondents in the general social survey, it means it's going to take approximately 10% of that, so about 150. But sometimes SPSS will sample slightly more than 150, sometimes slightly less, but this will just give us an approximate number. I don't want to tell it exactly because I, I just don't want to do that right now. Okay. Um, but so I can press continue. I'm going to press OK. Okay. Now this is telling me that, it, that uh, anytime I run any type of analysis, it's only going to pull 10% of the uh, sample of the general social survey. So if I were to run an analysis, and I want to see how sampling influences the sampling distribution, the standard error of the mean, uh, what I could do is I could click Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and let's just say I want to look at siblings of SIBs. I click on the variable sib, I get it in here. I click on what I want. So it already has the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum and the maximum value already checked. Um, but I also want to uh, give the standard error of the mean. So I want to get the standard error of the mean from SPSS. So I'm gonna press continue and then I'm going to press okay. Okay. Now, as we see, like I said, it, it sampled approximately 10% um, of the distribution. So it didn't get 158 pulled 134 people. And it gave us a mean, which is 3.54, a standard error of the mean, which is 2.252, and then a standard deviation for this specific sample, which is 2.919. Now, if you all remember what happens if we increase our sample size, the thing that happens if we increase our sample size is that the standard error, so the standard error of the mean, decreases. So let's just say that instead of uh, selecting 10% of the distribution, we'll just say we select 25%. Um, so obviously this N of 134 is going to go up. So it's going to get 25, approximately 25% of the distribution. So how do we do that? Well, we just did it, right? So we come back to this data, and then we select cases, and then instead of selecting 10%, uh, let's just say we select 25%. So we select 25% of the cases, press continue, and then we're going to sample 25%. Now the output tells me that it's uh, going to only calculate anything that we ask it for with 25%. Again, it's gonna be a random sample. Um, so the 134 that are here right now in this sample, they're gonna be put back into the 
general population, which is general social survey is the sample itself, but let's just say that that's the population we're looking at. And it's going to pull another uh, respondent. Some, some of the people are going to be the same. Some people are not going to be the same. So I'm going to rerun the analysis for uh, siblings. So analyze descriptive statistics, and I'm going to go to descriptives. I still have the sibs, and I'm going to, everything's still checked. Press OK. Now, as we can see, because we pulled a different sample, the sample mean is different. So the first one was 3.54. The second sample mean was 3.74. Standard deviations wasn't a dramatic change, um, but uh, it is obviously different because the standard deviation of this sample is going to be different from the standard deviation of this sample. But what you do see, what is a noticeable difference, is the standard error of the mean, which is the variance or the dispersion of the sampling distribution. As you can see with that, the standard error, the mean is substantially smaller, 0.152 versus 0.252 when you have a larger sample size and when you have a smaller sample size. So obviously that's another thing that uh, we learned in class as well. Then of course we can compare this mean and then this standard deviation to the actual um, mean and standard deviation for the whole sample, so the whole 1,500 uh, respondents. So the way we would do this is we would just not sample. So we would go back to the data tab, and we click, 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 select cases. And then here, instead of like doing a random sample, we're just gonna select all cases. I'm gonna press okay. So the filter's off and it's not pulling a random sample. So let's just say I go analyze descriptive statistics. Come over here to descriptives, and then I'm going to actually get rid of the standard error, the mean. Um, well, I guess I could keep it because it is still a sample, but um, so as we can see, you know, there's 1,500, so general social survey is technically still a sample, so I just decided to keep the standard error, the mean, but obviously we were kind of in this example treating it as if it was a population and we were sampling from this, I guess, population. So the mean, the actual mean of the 1,500 respondents that we had in this data set was 3.64. When we sampled, again, with 134 respondents, we had a sample mean, which is 3.54, 3.54, slightly below the, I guess, what you would consider to be the population mean in this example. And then the second sample, 3.74, was slightly above, I guess, the population mean in this example. Um, so this is the actual standard deviation. So this is just to kind of like illustrate this concept that as you increase your sample size, um, the standard error of the mean decreases and you're gonna have less dispersion, less variation in the sampling distribution. 